Okay, it's great to see everyone. Uh, why don't we bless the people next to you? Say, you are the remnant of God. Okay, and bless them. You are the future disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today is the first week of uh, October, and uh, it's the greatest and the least question that uh, disciples asked. So if you get a chance uh, this week, please read uh, Matthew chapter 18 through uh, just the entire chapter, because um, the disciple is asking a wrong question, and we talked about this, but um, we've, we've been given this message again uh, this, um, this week. You know, who is greater? You know, who is the greatest you know, in the kingdom of heaven? Uh, there were 12 uh, disciples, and um, there was three, um, like top three disciples, you know. Uh, Peter, James, and uh, John. So maybe they were thinking, you know, who is who is the greatest uh, disciple, right? So, um, you know, some some of the young people here, maybe you're not really so interested um, that I'm greater or you know I'm better. But um, the society that you're gonna go into is all about this. It's all about competing. It's all about win against another person. And you're stepping on that person, and you're going upward, right? And your boss uh, will encourage you to do that, you know, to be nice and have uh, great manners, but to win, to compete and win, and otherwise you're going to be cut off, right? So that's why even at churches, uh, naturally, you know, it's really not... It's really not their fault, but naturally, because they've been living in that kind of society, they come to church and they, they kind of think like, you know, our department is TCK department, right? You know, our department is better at this, you know, than, I don't know, high school or <laughs> junior high. So people come to think that way, right? But the thing is, uh, if we have that kind of mindset, God cannot show you the very plan that he has for you. He has a very clear, absolute plan for each and every one of us. Amen? If the plan is already completed, then he would have called us. You know, God is in control of life and death. And you, ha you have to have absolute faith regarding that. Okay? There's no life and death that God is not controlling. Right? So if you're alive, just the fact that you're alive, whether you went through some disease or you know, severe cancer or things like that, if you are alive, that means God has an absolute plan for you. Amen? So let's bless the people next to you. And people online also, bless the, bless the person in the next screen. You, you know what I mean? Okay? <laughs> Let's bless the people next to you. God has an absolute plan for you. Because you're alive. Okay? So there was one year in Arizona, I did ministry on behalf of a pastor, and there was four grandmothers. You know, I served a very small church, home church. You know, my room was right next to the worship room. So if this is the worship room, my room was like right there. Okay, so there was four or five grandmothers. Um, the church used to have 20, 30 uh, church, but because of some problem, the pastor left and all that. So my father sent me, you know, no one else, there's no one else to go. So I went. So I was living there by myself, like I was cooking for myself and, you know, I was doing everything. Um, but I was serving the four grandmothers and, you know, you can, you can kind of think as a minister, you know, you got to be careful to think that, like, you know, these grandmothers, they're going to pass away <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to do whatever <laughs> here. But I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I, I came to think that if, they're, if they are alive, God has a plan to fulfill through them. And I told them, there's a reason that God has called you to the gospel, to be his child, 
And if you're alive, there's a plan. And you know what happened? So with that saying, I, you know, with the flow of the message from, you know, um, uh, you know, follow the message from Korea, I deliver them to have thirty gospel Bible verses. Okay? Uh, I think maybe ten or fifteen of them I gave it gave them um gave them, uh, you know, 15 of them, but to have gospel by verses, because Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 20, it says, um, have the full armor of God. There is a scheme of Satan, and not just praying, but have the full armor of God, right? And among the full armor of God, you know, there is a helmet of salvation, assurance of salvation, breastplate of the righteousness. This is the... Uh, uh, the breastplate means uh, thanksgiving, having thanksgiving about your salvation. And the belt of truth, belt of truth, belt is in the center, right? So have, the, have God's word in, in the center, you know, God's word center. And I have the shoes of the gospel, evangelism, because with the shoes you go everywhere, right? So have the gospel and go and evangelize. And have the shield of faith, right? But all of this helmet, breastplate, and belt, and shoes, and the shield is not for attacking. All those things are for defense. Because the Bible says Satan shoots the arrows. Satan shoots the arrow of fire. Okay? And these arrows are disbelief. You know, we talked about it last week, right? So, if you have all this helmet and everything, shield, then you will defend. You will defend, right? But the only thing that you can attack with is have God's word. And that's the sword that you have. Okay? So, so I pray that you will take, if you are doing this already, Make a resolution to have God's word completely. And if you're not, take a baby step. Amen? Take a baby step to have God's word. And there's 66 uh, books of Bible, right? So John chapter 20, verse 31. What's important is to have the theme of the Bible. To have God's word about the theme of the Bible. And John 20, 31, it says, These are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. And through his name, you and people will gain life. Why? Because Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, people are dead. Okay? People are not dying. Accurately, technically speaking, people are dead in their sins and transgressions, right? If you're separated, from, if you're fish and separate from water, you're already dead, right? So, the theme of the Bible is this. Jesus is the Christ, and through his name, you are gaining life, and you're sharing life. Okay? So about the fact that Jesus is the Christ, try to find and search about 30 Bible verses. So with the four and five grandmothers, I did this. And there was, everyone did it. They... Uh, took out a paper and they, they gave me like an assignment, you know. They wrote down the 30 Bible verses that I found. You know, Pastor, I found these 30 Bible verses. <laughs> and then they gave it to me. And many of them were, uh, had an international marriage. So many of them, their husbands were in U.S. Army because there is a huge army base in Arizona. So they started to meditate on this. Do not have the attitude of learning and gaining new knowledge, okay? Because that's going to take place anyway when you, something, when you hear something new. But have the attitude and posture to meditate on the gospel Bible verses, okay? 
And the first point of meditation is, this gospel has been given to you already. You are a child of God already. Amen? Jesus is the Christ already. Right? And Christ has finished the work of destroying the devil's work, and he finished it already. You are already set free. Right? But see how Saint, what Satan does is Satan deceives us. Right? See, among, among many things that Satan can do to the children of God, the only thing that Satan, Satan can do is a deception. Satan cannot bring you a curse. Satan has no power and authority to do that. Satan cannot, like, I don't know, control your body. Only demon-possessed people will be controlled by Satan. The only thing that Satan can do to you is a deception. So if you think about that, if you think about that, that means Satan makes you lose hold of what happened to you already. Okay? Because if you, if you and I, we always enjoy Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. I, I, I'm enjoying this for 40 days these days. I'm going to talk about 40 days later. But, um, you know, if you enjoy all the time that God is with you, you know, you go to, you're on the way to a restroom and you say, God, I believe that you are with me even at this moment that I'm going to the restroom. All right? You heard something that is shocking and hurting. God, I believe that you are with me in this hearing something shocking. You see someone dying and you feel like you want to pray for them. You know, you might be, you got to be careful that you are a good Christian and you're a good evangelist. So I'm praying for them. When no one else is praying for them, everybody else is judging them. Everybody else is looking, but I'm praying for them. No, no. God, I believe that you are with me and you are letting me see this and you are letting me pray for them. If you can just enjoy this 24 hours all the time, then your spiritual state will completely change. If you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph was not shaken by the problems of you know, his mother's death and slavery, you know, all that, right? Why? Because Joseph's spiritual state was different. Why was Joseph's spiritual state different? Joseph's spiritual state was so different to the point where he was able to see how God is guiding him. Being a slave, being sold by his own brothers, his brothers actually tried to kill him. You guys know that, right? But there was no water, right? So all of that, Joseph saw that there was guidance of God. Why? God, because Joseph confessed, even at that moment, God, I believe that you are with me in this, in this well. <laughs> I believe you are with me. <laughs> you are with me in, this, in giving me these brothers to me. Joseph's spiritual state was different, and your spiritual state is everything. Why? Because through deception, through Satan, through deceiving you, Satan does not give you circumstances. Satan uses the circumstances. Satan cannot give you problems. God allows problems. You understand? God is in control. God is in absolute control. God is in absolute control over your life, over our church, over this nation called Korea, over America, over Canada, over all the nations, 237 nations of the world. God is in absolute control, whether you believe it or not, whether I believe it to what extent or not, God is in absolute control. So, Satan cannot give you problems. Satan is using the problems to give you anxiety. What if this happens? To give you fear. Oh my God, something's going to happen. I'm being sold as a slave in a foreign country. I don't know if uh, Joseph spoke Egyptian, but if he didn't speak the Egyptian language, then he learned the language as a slave. Can you think about that? You know, When I went to America, I went to 
different institutes to learn English. But Joseph learned, Joseph had to learn the culture and the language of Egypt as a slave. Slave is not a human being. You guys know that, right? I mean, slave is a human being, but they consider slave as a property. So you, you wake up in the, in the middle of the night and you're thirsty and you can call your slave like, oh, Joseph, bring me some water. And Joseph has to wake up. But if Joseph doesn't understand, bring me, some, bring me a cup of water in Egyptian, then he's in trouble. But Joseph's spiritual state was that, God, I believe that you are with me in learning a new language as a slave. Our spiritual state is everything. So make your spiritual state first priority. Why? Because in that way, you will not be deceived. Okay, let's bless the people next to you. Let's not be deceived. That's all we need to do. Why? Because Christ has defeated the authority of Satan already. So because we're deceived, you know, we can, we, can, we can defeat Satan like we can. I don't know. I don't know how to express this. You can make Satan kneel down in front of you because Christ is with you. Because Christ is the king and Christ is God. And he already crushed the head of Satan. And this mighty, strong, powerful Christ is inside of you. But because you do not have God's word, that is not so real to you. Okay? So meditate upon, first, start collecting the 30 gospel Bible verses. I'll give you the directions. Any Bible verses that talk about the king, prophet, and priest work of Christ. Okay? One of them is Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, For those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You are completely set free from any condemning thoughts, any condemning thoughts, any condemning words that people say to you or you tell yourself. But hearing this and having it as your sword is completely different. Okay? And that sword can come upon you when you meditate. Okay? Hold on to this Bible verse as you meditate. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. Because God has to reveal this word to you, right? God is the one who, who's giving you faith. For this was not revealed to you my, uh, flesh and blood, but this was revealed to you my Father in heaven. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. When you sit down and start meditating, just Open yourself to God and to God's grace. Ask for God's grace. Because it is only God's grace that can give you faith. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Faith is a gift of God. Faith is a gift of God. Okay? It, something dramatic, realization and faith does not have to happen every time. Why? Because Jesus clearly said, Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8, Jesus said, wait. Wait for the Holy Spirit, because you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because in the last days, I'm going to make you as a witness, as my witness to the ends of the earth. Okay? There are many people, there, there's, there are many people who can talk, but these days I see that there's, there's not that many people who can even talk about the gospel in the field. You know what I mean? But just, just a talker of the gospel is not God's plan. God's plan for you is to be a witness. Someone who experienced it. A witness like Joseph. A witness like Joseph. So when Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt, you could think about it. There's nothing that he is afraid. There's no one who can shake him. He doesn't listen to any words of the people, but he respects them. Okay? And then God gives him proper, timely wisdom to run the country. 
this Hebrew, this Hebrew, he's not even just Egyptian, this Hebrew from another nation who used to be a slave in one of the minister's house, now is a prime minister and he is governing the entire empire of Egypt in such a different way. Not only he saves his own empire, he saves other nations around them when, when the famine came upon them, right? That's the kind of blessing that God has prepared for us. Amen? And the first, the first thing that you should begin with is having the gospel by verses. So meditate on already and not yet. You're already a child of God. I'm going to give you one Bible, one more. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. You're already a citizen of heaven. John 19, 30. Jesus is the Christ already. He has finished it, okay? So, not yet. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we will be a witness not only in this city, but we'll be a witness to the ends of the earth. We'll be a witness in Samaria, which is a deserted land. No one goes to a land of crimes, a land of, land of addictions. We'll be a witness, not just go there with man's love, but we will, God will take us there. You got to wait for God's timing to take you to a evangelism field because it is the time schedule. Okay? Not yet. And the kingdom of God, kingdom of God has to be established. So Jesus talked about the works pertaining to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the works of kingdom of God will happen where you are. Where you are. So what should you do? Ask for it. Meditation, start with this. Confirm what has been given to you already. What has been done to you already. And ask. Ask, it will be given to you. Amen? Ask, you got to ask for the kingdom of God to come upon your apartment complex. To come upon your school. Why? Because the Bible clearly says it is not just the people who are sinning. People are sinning, yes. But people are not suffering just because of their sin. People are not suffering and being punished because of their sin. There is a being that is working so the people will sin. Kingdom of Satan. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. He's the ruler of the kingdom of the air, a spirit now at work for those who are in disbelief. Okay? Kingdom of Satan. Very simple, isn't it? But you do not belong to the kingdom of Satan. You belong to the kingdom of God. But the purpose that God has called you, the purpose that God has called you to the kingdom of God is to enjoy, of enjoy, enjoy to keep on asking for the kingdom of God to come upon where you are. You are the channel. You are the channel of kingdom of God. Amen? Let's bless the people next to you. You are the channel. You know, some people, oh, I see that there's some sparkling eyes here who really want to make this as their own enjoyment. Um, then have that meditation time of 30 gospel Bible verses. Okay? Because all the messages that are being given through me are God's grace, of course, but are based upon this. When I, when I say kingdom of God, there are these Bible verses and the pictures and images that God gave to me as faith, as a revelation, is based upon. 
And all of you can have this God's word. Amen? Have God's word. God's word is not for display. God's word is not for, for the subject of form, of course, but have it for yourself. Grab it. Put it in your hands. You understand? Have it in your heart. And that will naturally happen. Very easily, naturally, very smoothly, it will happen when you meditate. And I call that your quiet time. You know, in the last days, there's more uh, you need to have quiet time even more because things are more chaotic, okay? In your quiet time, look through the Bible verses and search for the Bible verses, okay? Use some internet searches. and Or the best way is to ask me, <laughs> you know, or ask any other pastor. Christ and your salvation blessing of your salvation. See, people do not know about salvation even after they receive salvation. People say that they're Christian, but they don't have assurance of the works that Christ has finished already. Okay? That's the fundamental and the foundation. Okay? But faith comes from hearing, right? But faith starts from hearing. But you can have faith and possess faith the content of faith as we meditate. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who meditates on the word of the Lord day and night. And he will be like what? He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water. Joseph was like a tree planted by the streams of water. Okay, sometimes the water was overflowing. Sometimes it was very windy and stormy. But it didn't matter. Do you know why? Joseph was a tree. And all he needs to be is like a tree to be rooted by the streams of water. And he was not a tree trying to get out of slavery, trying to solve some relationship problems. No, that is not what is pure and the best. What is pure and the best for you is to be a tree, sitting, be still. But where you are is important, not, not a tree planted by the streams of uh, 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 polluted water, but a tree that is planted by the streams of water. And the streams of water is God's word. And the trees absorbing the water and the ingredients of the land is meditation. And do you know what it says in verse 3? Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 says, Then, according to the season, when the time comes, you will bear fruits. And what was more touching and what was more answer for me is after that. You know, many people focus on bearing fruits, right? You know what it says next after that? It says, the leaves will not wither. What does that mean? Continuation. You're not going to go up and down and high and low. Bear fruits and then be arrogant and we'll have a big church, big congregation and you know, I, I know this person and, you know, person in the White House or whatever it is, you know, and then you go like, oh, be considered and all that. No, no, no. You, you will just be a tree planted by the streams of water, God's, God's word and the gospel and the worship and the message flow. And then the reproduction will happen again. Your leaves will not wither. You will not go dry. Your spiritual state will will never go dry. So I'm not just giving you homework to know the uh, Bible, God's word, and meditate. No, no, no. This is the greatest place that you can be. Blessed is the man who meditates upon the word of God day and night. Have a quiet time in the morning. And at night, as you begin the day and as you close the day. Biblical, isn't it? And as you do this, in your daytime, 
Many things happen, right? Or many thoughts come to you. Ask God about the meaning, okay? Just keep asking. And that itself is concentration. Your spiritual state starts to change when you concentrate spiritually. When you concentrate on God, when you concentrate on God's word, okay? So do that during the quiet time. You will receive so much strength that you, you will be so peaceful in that quiet time. And you will keep asking and God's going to give you answers through the word and through, especially through Sunday worship. Because God, God separated a day just for the worship so he speaks fully on this day. So it's really about how you come to church on Sunday. It's really about before you come to church. <clears throat> and when you start to concentrate, just like Jesus promised, you will have power. God's going to give you spiritual power first. Okay? And then physical power will... You, it wouldn't matter so much even if you have physical things or not. Just like Joseph, spiritual state. Okay? And at the end, God will use you, God will put you in a place to reveal God's glory so that you can physically solve the problems of the age and also bring God to the stage and let people know that God is alive and Jesus is the Christ. <sighs> Do you know why I believe? Because we believe in the same God, and that same God who worked upon Joseph, Daniel, David, Paul, and Timothy are still alive and working. Got to believe in that if you're a child of God. Let's bless the people next to you with faith. The same God is with you. So it's not over. America, Canada, other nations, especially European nations, it looks like it's over, right? It's not over. It's never over. Because God is the creator. He's the beginning and the end. He will not, just, he will not only bring disasters to wake people up, but his ultimate purpose is to save them, is to revive them, is to heal them. Because he has the power. And that power will be given to us. And when that power is starting to be uh, given to you, you will start to be healed. You don't have to be try to be healed in your mental, emotional, physical, financial problems. No, you will be healed and you will start healing others. Why? Through your power? No, no, no. Through the word that you have. And then that's when you will start to see that God and the Christ and the Holy Spirit, the triune God is sitting at the heavenly throne. And you will start to see in the Bible that you belong to the heavenly throne. And the throne represents such a great authority, and it's a different belonging. You have a different belonging and identity. And so much time has passed, and I have to end the message. Hello, Hallelujah. <laughs> Number seven, isn't it? Number seven. And your prayers will transcend time and space. So evangelism does not happen just through words. Evangelism, you will know that, is happening through your prayer, transcending time and space. So start with the quiet time, and in your daytime, for all the things that is happening, ask God. Take it to God, okay? Take it to God, because it is God who is allowing that, and ask about the meaning. Then you will not be caught up. You will not be caught up with the... Um, sense of guilt, or you will not be caught up with just the person's wrongdoing. And for the remnants, take a baby step to have a collection of 30 gospel by verses, okay?
You can ask me anytime. You can ask me 24 hours anytime, okay? So uh, the disciples are asking this question. Wrong question. Who is greater? Who is the least? And that is happening at church. That is happening at church. So remnants, remember that the current adult generation is your platform. Okay? Is your platform. They're not your models, but they're your platform. You should be thankful because if if they didn't exist, you don't exist. Isn't that true? But if you look at Joseph, Daniel, Samuel, and David, God eventually showed them the answer. The answer that adult generation could not find. Goliath appeared. There was no adults who can step forward. Because they, they have a logical calculation that they will die <laughs> if they fight with Goliath. Very logical scientific calculation, isn't it? That is very strong, built upon the past experiences. But the past experiences for David was the past experiences of in everything, enjoying that God is with me. Even one stone that he threw to chase, chase out, you know, to, to kick out uh, the, the lions and the bear that came to, you know, to, to, uh, to uh, take you know, one of the, his lambs away, even that one stone, he threw it with the experience of God is with me. So when he looked at Goliath, his eyes were completely different. That's the thing. When he looked at Goliath, his logical, scientific, spiritual calculation was that <laughs> that Goliath is a servant of the devil, the servant of idol worship. He's an idol worshiper. And he's mocking my God who was living and active and who was with me for all the days of my life in the past. How dare is he to mock my God who is alive and working? And my God surely will give me power to take him away, take him out. The answer that adult generations cannot find, it will be given to you. So remnants, do not deceive anything that is going on in the church, okay? Any words, don't, just, it is not, it is not what it seems, okay? Don't be, don't be deceived by what is the appearance, what you see. 보이는 게 다가 아니라 말이에요. And when you look at Joseph, the, the king of the, you know, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, could not solve the problem of famine, right? So the world leaders, they are leaders, but I'm sure that they have many worries. I don't know, maybe the government of advanced nations, they gave up on the problem of drugs. Because everyone is doing it. You will be the problem solver. Just bless the people next to you. You will be the problem solver. Amen? Because God does not give up on his own glory. <clears throat> there are times that people do wrong things 
You should forgive them. But before you forgive them, Jesus says, go to them in prayer and encourage them. But when you go to them, go to them with a witness, with another person, and encourage them so that they can realize about their wrongdoing, so that they will not make the mistake again. Do not judge them right away. Do not do anything uh, right away. Encourage them first. Give them a chance. If you look in, in the uh, epistles of Apostle Paul, he says twice, twice. Encourage them twice, and and they don't. They still don't get it, and they still you know, keep on doing that um, sin that they should not do at church then forgive them. Just let them be and forgive them in your heart. What was one of the last words that Jesus said on the cross is that he asked God, God, please forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. But before you do that, before you come to a judgment, encourage them. In prayer, approach them, with another witness, this is important, okay? Another witness, and encourage them. And Apostle Paul did it, said twice, and then they still don't understand, then just forgive them, and pray for them. Do not work for the things that will be perished. Work, spend your time for the things that are eternal. We received that message last week, right? So this is happening. Lastly, regarding forgiveness, hard to forgive. There are some people that you are, it's, it's really hard for you to forgive, right? Why? Because it's because you faced a loss because of them. Right? They did something to you that is not beneficial to you, right? So that's why it is very hard for you to give, forgive. But when you look at Romans chapter 5, verse 8 through 11, God forgave you when you were the enemy of God. When you were a child of Satan, following the words of Satan, when you were still a sinner, God forgave you. So God's forgiveness for you is incomparably greater. So forgive them. And if you have the gospel, if you come to know the gospel through meditation of God's word, then you don't need anything else. Because God is with you. Christ has destroyed and set you free. And Christ has saved you. And the Holy Spirit to teach you and give you guidance and directions and wisdom is with you. And you have the right to pray every time, even right now, if you close your eyes. And even if you don't close your eyes, if you just pray, you, your prayer is valid. And through your prayer, Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6, it says, God works because of your prayer. So it says, do not put rest on God. God works when you pray. You're making God work in a way. <laughs> I, I don't know how to put this. It's just that you have not experienced it because in the, in the process of praying, in the process of using your identity and authority in prayer, Satan comes and deceives you and you stop praying. Okay? So don't be deceived. Just have the full armor of God so that you will not be deceived for your lifetime. Amen? And if you keep on praying and you don't stop praying, you will experience that force of darkness are being broken down. And God will, you will experience that God gives you the best thing for you. Failure is not a failure. 
God gives you failure because that is not the place for you to be. Being a lovely son in Israel was not the place for Joseph to be. So God gave problems to Joseph and took him to Egypt. So you don't need anything else if you have the gospel. If you have, if, so if you pray with the words of the gospel, with the content of the gospel, nothing becomes a problem. Why? Because there is no problem. There are problems, but for you and for God's kingdom, there is no problem. And more accurately speaking, God will show you why it is not a problem if you pray. Okay? God is very precise. In my own experience, God is very precise and detailed in timing, in meetings, in happenings, in the message flows, and very timely, very timely. Even in my personal relationships, everything, it looks like everything is, everything is linked to each other. Every happenings and the message and everything is linked to each other. And then it's, it's going forward. Prayer. Nothing is a problem. So just two things this week. Um, Enjoy this seven journeys of prayer. I talked about it, right? Quiet time, asking the meaning, concentration, and everything. Start with number one. And if you want to be an evangelist and a disciple of uh, Christ, 40 days concentration. You don't have to tell others about it, just you and God, one on one. 40 days of concentration, which is what Jesus did with the disciples at Mount Olives. If you, if you pray just a little bit, you will know that right now is about the time to do this. You will know. And before this year ends, There's about two months, 40 days of concentration, one-on-one. What do you do? Complete complete your collection, your own collection of spirit-filled 30 gospel Bible verses about Christ and salvation as you meditate. And second thing you do is this. Always in 24 hours, in all things, Make this confession. Matthew 1, 23. Emmanuel, God, you are with me. God, I believe you are with me right now. Amen? And then, use the name of Jesus Christ to bring down the kingdoms of Satan, works of the devil. Use the name, not your name, not your power, your past experience. Okay, that's great. I respect. Use the name of Jesus Christ. So 40 days of God's word and prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you have spoken to us. I pray that you will bring down your heavenly throne, your heavenly will, and your heavenly plan to each and every one of us here. We have a different time schedule and different situations and everything, but I believe that you have given them a personal mission, a personal covenant in the right time at the right place. So I pray that not none of man's word or my message, just God's flow of message will be fulfilled in every step we take, only for the sake of becoming a witness of Christ, becoming the platform and the watchtower and having the antenna so that the people in darkness can be drawn to the brightness of our light and be saved and be healed so that your heart will be refreshed. Your tears will be gone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
as you praise, let's praise. Father, we thank you that you have given us everything. You have secured our future, nothing to worry about. And you have allowed us to live on this world only for the sake of enjoying the fullness of the light, which is Jesus Christ, and shining the light. 